Hi, this is Matt from ESU, and I am really excited because today I get to make a brand new product announcement. Yes, I know, it seems like I make a lot of announcements, whether it be on Facebook or other social media, wherever it might be. It seems like we're always announcing we've got new sound files available or this or that. I think we're up to almost a hundred new full throttle sound files now. Uh, full throttle steam, full throttle diesel, very, very specific sound files. We have the 4449, we have the 844. Um, we're getting ready to get into some narrow gauge with the K27 and the K36. Um, and then we get into the diesels and we have just about every manufacturer with every block of, of prime mover that's ever been made. Two stack exhaust, four stack exhaust, about every cylinder version, six cylinders, eight, 12, 16, 20, uh, with turbos, without turbos. And now we're even getting into putting out more than one prime mover with the same basic sound. So instead of having one tier four Jivo, there's two tier four Jivo sounds so that you can have some variety. Uh, maybe you've bought some of the Bowser or Intermountain or, or Scale Trains or Athern or SD40-2s that have been on the market. We've put out already four different SD40-2 sounds and we have a couple more recorded that we're going to put out as well. So gone are the days of monotony and model railroading where every sound sounds the same because it's all one locomotive that's been recorded and then put into every locomotive on your layout. So we want to get rid of that and that's why we always seems like we're announcing something when it comes to new sounds. We also have uh, some new announcement when it comes to decoders. We have some new N-scale decoders that are coming out. These are slide-in decoders that we develop for use from the factory in Intermountain's uh, N-scale engines and Atlas's N-scale engines and others. So those are going to be available both in an OEM version that will slide in to upgrade from a non-sound to a sound and it will be available as a retrofit or uh, retail version that will be able to be used in locomotives that have already been put on the market. Now those engines aren't designed for sound so you're still going to have to do a little milling here and there to put a speaker in. You know a Dremel tool comes in handy there or if you don't have a milling machine. But these, or these decoders are six function outputs so you'll have lots of lighting. So um, if you're working in N scale and you're used to very very tiny uh, you know wiring and all of that uh, these will be right up your alley because there's lots of outputs for you to put those in. So flashing ditch lights on both ends plus headlights will be no problem anymore. So with those announcements, that doesn't even get close to what I want to announce today. Finally, after years of development it seems, uh, we are able to take what we've come up with for 15 to 20 years of DCC uh, product development in terms of DCC systems and combine it with the way that we're running our trains today all over the world with our cell phones. So we've taken the problems that we have with a cell phone, mainly being able to find where the function buttons are, uh, pressing the wrong things, um, not being able to look at your train because you're always looking at the screen, and we've combined it with the tactile response of a hardware physical throttle that has a knob and programmable function buttons that you can feel that you're not always having just to look at. Now, this is a Wi-Fi Android operating system that controls, or that, excuse me, that speaks directly to the new cab control integrated control unit. Um, this is a um, system that will have a 21 volt variable power supply, which has seven amps of power. So that means that you can run, um, because it's variable, you can turn that down and run N scale, through HO, through S, through O, all the way up to G scale. And with a seven amp power supply, you won't need any boosters and still be able to run a lot of trains. Now, if you have a big layout or your layout continues to grow and you do need boosters, we've already got those. We make the Ecos command station, and the logic for the Ecos is very similar to the logic in the cab control system. So many of the accessories that are used will also be able to use with the new system. So because it's Wi-Fi, the signal is very, very steady. 
Um, it's uh, it's not like the old radio uh, frequencies where you would have uh, maybe too many throttles getting in the way, having too much interference at maybe at train shows or other places. We know that we can run at least 32 Wi-Fi throttles on the system. Um, actually, it's designed for more. We just didn't feel like getting any more out. We figured 32 was going to cover most layouts that are out there today. Um, we're pretty sure it can cover more. Um, the the throttles themselves are already proven. They are the new Mobile Control 2 throttles. So everybody uh, has tested these. They work very well. They're very responsive. Uh, we can put the logic for up to 16,000 locomotives in the system. We can run well over 1,000 accessories, so switches and servos and things like that. Um, you know, switch decoders, uh, stationary decoders, I might say. Um, all of that can be done through the cab control system. Then one great thing about the system is that it comes with Railcom Plus. Now, Railcom is something that's been in the ESU decoder since um, <laughs> very, very long ago. Um, any select or version 4 decoder from 2009, 2010, all have Railcom Plus. So any of the locomotives that you've bought maybe with ESU sound from the factory, they've already got these features in it. Unfortunately, with the systems that have been on the market, there was really no way to talk to this, uh, this language of communication. So it wasn't being utilized unless you were using an ECOS. So we've taken that ability, put it into the cab control, so now every time you buy an ESU equipped engine, as soon as you put it on the track, that information will be sucked into the system as it will self-recognize. That means all of the icons, the picture of the locomotive may identify if the index number is set right. If it doesn't, you can go into the system and you can choose one of over 150 indexes, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, icons I should say, that we've already put in there for the North American and Australian markets. Um, there's uh, the ability to have 28 function buttons all programmable, all changeable icons so that you can go in, um, those icons will self-register for engines that have ESU sound in them, but if they don't have ESU decoders, you can also manually enter and put those icons in. You can name the engine how you wish as, as well. Um, say instead of having just 4732, uh, we can name this as CP Rail 4732 M636. Um, and all of that can be done through self-recognition. As soon as it puts on the track, it knows something new has been put there, and it will auto-populate. No more having to remember, oh, what function button is this on, or what does F6 do again? Uh, I'm not really quite sure. Well, I can look at my throttle now, and I can see that there's different colors for the icons, yellow being a light, blue being logic, red being a sound, and I can have, again, up to 28 function buttons that are momentary or latching. So every single button, I can choose whether that button will stay on after I press it or whether it will let go as soon as I remove my finger. Maybe I want my brakes to only work when I'm holding them in, and when I let go, the brakes come off. I can put that on any function button now. Uh, it used to be in many of the other systems on the market that it's really only F2 that gives that ability, not with an ESU system. You can also update the system very, very easily. If we'd ever go to maybe 36 function buttons, it'll just be a simple uh, update. We put that on a data stick, we plug it into the back of the integrated control unit, directly into the, uh, the USB port, um, or maybe we'll have the, a second ability to update using an Ethernet cable through your, your computer. Uh, we're going to try to make this as easy as we possibly can. Currently, it's set up for the USB data stick. When the update is put into the system, it will self-recognize, and it will automatically do the update. No more sending everything back to the factory so they can put new hardware or new chips in. Uh, just simply not needed. This is essentially a computer that's going to run your trains, and with computer comes logic. Logic is very easy to update, very fast. We can put something out very quickly. So there are updates already planned. Um, the system comes fully functional. We'll do everything that you ever dreamed of with your other systems and more and we have new features that we're going to be working on down the line. Now we've talked about some pretty high function buttons with F36 possibly in the future currently only F28. 
So how do you get to those? It must be difficult because it's difficult on every other system out there, it seems. You got to press two buttons in to get to another menu, and uh, then it seems like you got to hop on one leg and hold your arm out. Um, not so much the case with the ESU systems. Basically, all the function buttons will be directly on the screen. You simply take your finger like any other Android or cell phone device, and you just slide it up. Um, now, as you're sliding back and forth, you can quickly see all of the functions that are available. Same thing with locomotives. There'll be a master list of locomotives in the system, and we're going to have videos to show all of this uh, in the manual and, and beyond. But as you get into those, you'll be able to see a list of all of those 16,000 locomotives that can be stored in the system. Um, then there is an active screen. Once on the active screen, you can simply just swipe back and forth to get in there. Um, again, working like any other Android device on the market. Those function buttons that I mentioned on the side, they can be function mapped to any of the functions that are in the device. So I use drive hold for my full throttle features on F9. F9 can be difficult to get to in some systems. Uh, some systems you can't see whether F9 is on or not. Every button on here will show whether it's actively pressed or not. And again, I can function map any of these side buttons to any output. So for myself, I put F9 on the top button right here because I can press that very easily with my thumb and not have to look at the throttle. So now I can run trains with an Android device without looking at the screen. I don't have to try to figure out, oh, what is it that I'm trying to do here and miss the trains going by? Because what fun is that? <laughs> they may sound good because they've got ESU decoders, but I'm sure that the factories work very hard, the companies that are making these models look great, and many of you guys are doing a lot of custom work as well. So enjoy the trains. Don't just sit there and constantly be having to look at your throttle to run them. So, Without further ado, um, again, we, we want to thank you for, for watching this video. There will be manuals um, with uh, PDF links um, directly in them that go to YouTube videos so that you can watch along with the manual as you're reading through it. Everything is very simple. These will be out, uh, looks like, the very beginning of November. Um, we have all of the hardware in stock already. We're just finishing up some of those how-to videos so that when you get them in your hands, all you'll have to do is watch the video and it'll show you exactly how to do it. But you know what? It's really simple. There's two wires on the back of the system. Basically, you hook it to the track. It's already completely Wi-Fi integrated, so there's nothing you have to do there other than connect like you would your phone to any Wi-Fi device. You press the icon to get started, it self-recognizes the first train, you press OK, you turn the throttle, and you're having fun. So it can't be much easier than that. So again, if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, there will be uh, already some information on the website when this video posts, so there will be lots there that uh, hopefully will answer any questions you might have. If not, shoot us an email, uh, post it on uh, YouTube, uh, send us a message through Facebook, or any other media that we have. Um, again, thank you very much for your time today. Let us know what you think.